Hey everybody, Karaoke here. Uh, we did a video last week where I talked about the way that they were handing out portals for the closed beta, and you know the the response to that was actually overwhelmingly bad. People seemed very upset that I might suggest that ArenaNet made a decision which was um, good for them, but not necessarily good for the player base. And I, I still believe that. I really think that that decision was primarily one that they made to get good press for their uh, for their event. Right? They're going to let people into the beta who like farming open world events and guess what the beta is going to show them farming open world events and so the people who do a lot of farming and enjoy it go in and they play it and they get good press um i still believe that's the case and actually i've, I've said that on the forums and my the threads where i say that keep mysteriously disappearing uh, which is always fun not getting locked but just vanishing um which is always interesting uh so i have with me model and raz you guys want to say hi quick hello yes, raz hello. <laughs> At the same time. Way to go. All right. Um, so I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about two things. First off, uh, how you feel now that the... Well, we actually don't know if the farming thing's over. So how how you feel a week in uh, about that. And then I, I have some other things that, I just, that, that are bugging me about Heart of Thorns that I wanted to ask you about. So first off, Raz, I know you've been farming quite a bit for one of those beta portals. How did that go? Oh, when as glorious as it could i um I, I spent about four or five days farming for about uh oh i'm a bad student where i'm supposed to be studying for finals but i'm sitting there farming for f five hours or pretty much all day but no nah, i farmed for a pretty long time i haven't gotten anything yeah, you've been a little unlucky. I know that we did have two people in the guild who did get them. Finalis, who I talked about last week, uh, who is kind of defending the whole system with me, he got one like 10 minutes into doing it. It was... Well, I mean... It didn't feel good. It did not feel good. I'm sure it felt good for him, and like, again, I'm happy for him. Like, he's a guy who I think should have it, but... And it was one of those like, oh, you know, I just went in there and got it. And I remember that happened and I was like, okay, maybe I'll do a little bit. And I played, I don't know, I, I did maybe a few hours of Silver Waste and a few hours of Dry Top. And I was like, I'm done. I don't feel like doing this anymore. I hate farming. I want this to be over. And I, I gave up. So I, you know, I've been talking on this about this on like Reddit and on the forums. And people keep telling me like, you're just angry because you didn't get a portal. And I'm like, I was angry about this before I had the opportunity to get a portal. But we made that video on Monday. It didn't get po somebody posted it on Reddit on like Tuesday or Wednesday, and <laughs> and people came in and started commenting and were like, hey, like you, you're just mad because you haven't gotten one yet. And I was like, I was mad before the patch hit. Right, you can't say that. That's not fair. I was mad. I, if I had gone in there and gotten a portal ten minutes in, like Finalis had, I still would be pissed about it because it's still the wrong way to hand out access. Am I wrong? No, I, I, I well, actually, I think you should ask Model first before I give my own opinion because mine's going to be a bit uh, uh, different than probably a lot of people's. Okay, well, you know who just showed up, Finalis. I'm actually going to pull him in here. User was moved to your channel. Hey, Finalis, we're actually talking about the beta access. Uh, we're, we're recording this for the channel. We were just talking about how you got a portal like 10 minutes in. Oh, yeah. Hey, yep, that, that kind of happened. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we're not like mad at you, but uh -huh. we're, we're happy for you. Um, Thanks. But everybody else feels kind of shitty about the whole process, I feel like. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, like, it's just, it's just how this system set up that Anet decided to put this in Silver Waste Dry Top and have it in a kind of a lottery system where you, where people will farm hours and hours in hopes to just get that portal. And I was fortunate enough to get it really early on, but I thought it was um, it was a much higher drop rate, but uh, it, it's now apparent that it's not, where we have many of the guild members farming it for the last week, and only one person besides me from the guild apparently has gotten in. Yeah. So, Model, what do you think? Did you do any farming? So right when I heard the news, I kind of 
had set in my mind where I'm not going to get this thing. I, I'm, I'm not going to go and farm hours and hours of content that I don't like. Right. So, it's, it's not something I'm disappointed that I didn't get. But I can see the frustration with other people because, I mean, it is essentially a PvE beta event. And so I feel like, at the very least, they should have tied it to other PvE content. Well, so that might be my next question is, you know, is it a PV? Like, I guess you said it best there. We're calling it a PvE beta event. Have we moved away from the way that we think about PvE? Like, in my head, when I think about PvE, I, I do think about the open world stuff. But I also think about dungeons and fractals and guild missions. And there's there's a lot of PvE content that I think about when I think of PvE. Do you guys feel like ArenaNet still is considering all those angles of PvE? Or does do you, do you think they've really settled into this idea of open world dynamic event maps, a la Silver Waste and Dry Top, combined with instanced story content? And, like, that's the new PvE. Do you think we're going to get... Because I, I was mentioning this before. If you go back one year, in the last year, the content we've gotten in this game are two maps and eight uh, living story instances, and that's it. Nothing with dungeons, nothing with fractals, nothing with guild missions, nothing in really any other part of PvE. Other than, you know, a couple new events that tied in with the living story. So... Do you guys think that that's the future of the game, or is this just uh, until Hot comes out and all of a sudden Hot's going to drop dungeons and raids and everything? Oh, well, if I can answer the question, if I can, from my yeah. opinion, yeah. So it's going. This is what I believe is going to happen when Hot, you know, when Hot comes out. It's going to be. I feel like there's going to be a lot of similar aspects to the PVE or what you you know what you call PVE um, with the dynamic events and things like that. But I think they're going to, from what I've seen from a lot of different systems, it seems like they're moving towards um, other types. I mean, if we remember the mastery system, there's See a lot soon. of like <coughs> clues to some Welcome different back. types of uh, PVE, like more solo content. Or like team content in the, not even not I, I don't know about in the open world, but possibly in parts of the open world where you can go somewhere and you do this thing um, that benefits you in some way. Where and there hasn't been a no like the, the call you know <laughs> Colin Johansson has not come out and said there's not going to be any dungeons. In fact, he said the quite opposite a few times that in the future there are going to be something like dungeons and something like raids just in a different form it's going to be instance but it's going to be something different and i think that you know right. so i'm people... going to actually interrupt you there did colin really say that because i remember i was participating in the rating cdi and that was with chris whiteside who is no longer at arena net right mm -hmm. so let's let's be clear this is coming from a guy who is no longer employed there i actually don't, well, I don't know uh, whether he was fired or whether he left and honestly we don't need to know that what we do need to know is that he was the head of, I forget what his exact title was, but he was a very senior sort of game designer planning out stuff, content for Heart of Thorns. And he left midway, halfway, maybe two thirds of the way through the development cycle. Mm -hmm. That whether, whether he left on his own or whether he left um, because he was uh, asked to leave, uh, that is a little odd. I do remember him saying that in his mind, raids were instanced content, that he was talking about instance challenging content, and they hired a raiding uh, lead, and, and things were looking good. He's gone. Oh. I know Colin said something in an interview with, I think it was with Angry Joe. He, he sort of mentioned something. He said, you know, okay, it's going to be, like you said, a, a different way of doing it, maybe. Yeah, but whenever they talk about challenging group content, I I can't help but feel like they mean stuff like Vinewrath or maybe like Marionette, but 
open world group bosses. Well, I mean, there's nothing, and I feel, I feel like there's nothing wrong with the idea of open world big bosses. It's just that the evolution that has been taking so far has not been up to par with what, sh like, if we considered challenging, I mean, considering, like, I mean, really, Vine Wraith isn't really that challenging. Marionette was probably a lot harder than Vine Wraith, but still is like, once you get the concept, it's still kind of like, oh, you kind of just, you kind of just go with the motions that everyone's kind of practiced. Which, I mean, if you think about it, that's kind of like every other raid and dungeon in any other game. Except that there's still... The arena has done a poor job of building upon those mechanics. So... I mean, realistically, all they have to do to make it harder is up the damage and up the boss's health, and boom, it's harder. Right? Like, the tuning is completely different from mechanics. Uh, and I, I think... You know, Marionette might have been a little harder than Vine Wraith because some of the mechanics were more complicated. Uh, and because by splitting up players, one player really did have an impact. So one player who didn't know what he was doing really had a, a big negative impact. But mm -hmm. one way or the other, like those are still, it's still all the same concept, whether it's Tequaddle, Triple Trouble, Vine Wraith, Marionette. It's all kind of the same thing. Well, I can ask this question. Do we really want open world ta content to leave the game? Like, entirely? That's the thing. Like, I don't feel like a lot of people want more Vine Wrath or, um, like, these type of content. I feel like for ArenaNet, it might be easier for them to make and to control um, and to be less buggy. Because, let's be honest, a lot of their older base game dungeons are filled with bugs and they've even removed the whole dungeon team um, from their from their company so i don't know I mean, that they did that two and a half me. years ago yeah but i mean they still don't have a dungeon team still to fix their dungeon bugs um i think that's because it's still legacy stuff it's like it's content that they realized was and let's be honest, those dungeons were not on par with what we thought dungeons should be. Um, and, I, and it comes from a lot of my friends, other friends not in the guild, but people who have come from games like Final Fantasy, Terra. The dungeon experience in those games is awesome, but the open world stuff is crap. And it's like, and even the PvP in those games is kind of meh. So like it's a give and take kind of thing. Like if you want one thing, you go to one game. If you want this other thing, go to this game. So it's really just like it's it's it works too. It's kind of like this weird, I don't know, kind of in between thing where some of the PVE content is really enjoyable, some of it isn't. Whereas PVP can be really enjoyable, and War of the World is really enjoyable for a lot of people. So it's really just uh, I, mean, I guess I guess you could say it's just what you want to play. So, I, I guess my question is this. There's four of us here. Does anybody have faith that ArenaNet is interested in providing new, interesting, challenging, instanced content in the near term, let's say before the end of the year, in like a serious way? Like, more, you know, like I don't consider adding two fractals to be serious. I would consider like two or three full dungeons with like three or four paths each to be serious. Does anybody think that that's even a remote possibility? Uh, <clears throat> no. No. I, don't. I did not. Yeah, I'm saying here, I don't think that's what Anat's going to go after. Um, well, I, I couldn't. And my no is only because in the near term. I think in the long term it will happen, but no one wants the long term, unfortunately. So I'm for the long term, but not many people are. So a, lot, a majority of players want near term, like you said. So it's really, though, I don't think the near term is going to happen with that. Well, I might have wanted long term a year ago, but a year ago when it was like, okay, well, we, we got, you know, fractals and those are cool. 
And so what else is coming? And it's like, okay, well, there'll be more in the future. All right, well, it's a year and a half later <clears throat> and there's nothing. Right, so um, Fractals shipped, what, like a few months after launch? So it was late 2012. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've gotten one dungeon path. A couple paths reworked a little bit. Um, but like one new path plus a handful of new fractals. That's not a lot. No, I think, uh, unfortunately, and I know it may be hard to believe, but Arenet probably realized this <laughs> this past year, and this is why they started working on HOT, is they realized that Guild Wars 1, when it came out, wasn't really Guild... I mean, not Guild Wars 1, Guild Wars 2 wasn't what they wanted it to be back then. And they're, like, they're kind of making up for mistakes that they made. Which, I mean, yeah, it's been, it's been two years. So there quite, are quite a bit of people who are kind of fed up. I'm not one of them, but there are people who are fed up with the, the, the long wait for something. And, I mean... If you think about it, expansion has been asked for for so long, and they're finally coming out with it. And I guess I'm just more patient than most people when it comes to that, but, I mean, I don't know. All right, so that's actually a good segue into kind of the second thing that I wanted to talk about, which is um, what I like to think of in my head as systems versus content. So as a brief explainer, when I'm talking about systems, I'm talking about features in the game like uh, the wardrobe, or specializations, or the mastery system. <clears throat> Those are all systems. There's not content there, right? You can unlock skins, but you don't you don't play unlocking skins. That's not content. Content would be maps and events and dungeons and fractals and and you know PvP maps and all that. Um. So. I think one of my biggest concerns with Heart of Thorns is that they're very heavily focused on systems. And you can argue that the systems that they're building are good or bad. I think overall they're good. I'm, I'm excited about most of the system. Um, I think some of them are coming a little late. You know, it's been, it's going to be three years after the game shipped before we get Masteries, which is the first time that they're bothering with an endgame progression system. But it took them three years from launch. That's that's a long time. You could argue it's late, but glad they're coming. What I'm worried about is content. So we get all these systems, but guess what? Unlocking masteries is really just going and getting a mastery point, which is channeling a thing in the world, right? It's not it's not fun. It's it's maybe there's some challenge getting there. But it's not really much different from a Vista. You have to figure out your way there, get there, and then you press your Activate button. Um, and then the process of unlocking those Masteries is just doing whatever to fill up a, an experience bar. That, that's not content. We are getting a few PvE maps of a very particular style. It's this open world, massive, dynamic event, phased kind of thing like we've seen in Dry Top and Silverweight. It's content that I don't particularly like. Um, I know some people do like it, and I, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to say anything bad about people who like that content. It's okay if you like that, but a lot of us don't like it, and we've not really heard much about other content. We are getting a new World vs. World Borderlands, and they look amazing. Uh, the the lady who built it all, Tears of Bauer, is like so boss. Like I'm just she is. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. She's so, awesome. So cool. <laughs> I love her. She's so uh, cool. Coolest person. Yeah. And if you guys like haven't seen her on Twitter or anything, like she does all these little sketches and stuff and posts them and they're they're really cool. Like she seems like an amazing person and she did an incredible job with those borderlands. That is new content, but it's also replacing existing content. So it's not necessarily more content. There's not more options. It's just a different thing. And then we get one new PvP map, which is a completely different game mode, which seems really cool, but it is just one more map. So th that'll make the game seem fresh for a little bit, and there'll be a new class, which again is more of a system thing than a content thing, but uh, somebody might argue otherwise, and that's fine. And, you know, the elite specializations might help some of the old content feel fresher. You know, hey, maybe I'll dust off my Mesmer and try and do dungeons as a chronomancer. But it's going to 
be the same dungeons, right? Because none of us think that it's going to ship with new dungeons or with raids at launch. So I guess my worry is they're focusing very heavily on the systems, but there's not enough content. And the story stuff is fun to play through once or maybe twice. That's about it. And other than the forced replayability by tying achievements to it, you know, I don't find that content very fun to do over and over again. So what do you guys think? Is there, are, are you also worried about what seems like a huge lack of content and an overfocus on the system? Um, so... I, I feel like what, what's going to happen is like they'll release three or four maps maybe with uh, Heart of Thorns and then people for people who don't like that that sort of content like the Silver Waste Dry Top thing they're going to rely on like having the new speci specializations um, to make the old content better like we, we already know that they're going to to um, tie rewards to to like doing events and stuff in the older maps. So, but do you think like I can go to Curse Shore and run around and do events right now? Does it make it more replayable now that there's going to be some map drops associated with it? I, I mean, it, maybe it does. I'm just I'm not so confident. Well, I mean, f for me, no. The, I mean, f farming one map over and over again just to just to get the the materials to make one of the new legendaries or something that that's not content for me. That's not fun. But I I feel like that's where they're going with it. I and heard Raz jumping they... in. I want to sneak in. I want to let him respond, and also I want to pose a secondary question to him. One of the knocks okay. on this game was that it was impossible to farm. For a long time during this game, you just saw people complaining, complaining, and complaining that you can't farm in this game. You think they've swung too far in the other direction. They're now relying on farming. Well, okay, so I'll answer that question, and then I'll talk about the previous one. So for that question, yes. For Silver Waste and Dry Top, they've swung way too far in that direction where you farm a map. Um, however, from what I've heard, from what we've seen so far, I mean, again, things can change, or we don't, again, we don't know everything about HOT. What I've seen, what I see is like, yeah, you're going to be participating in a map and getting materials. So it isn't as much farming as it is doing things. They're really pushing, like, they, again, you say they're pushing events. And so they want those events to be tied to no longer giving. Hopefully, what I hope they do is like they don't give bags anymore, or things like that. What they'll do is reward you with actual physical materials. And you can only get those materials a certain amount of time. I think I'm not really sure. I haven't read. I, I've, I it's been a while since I actually read the actual blog post about that. Um, but yes, I do agree that they have, with Silver Waste and Dry Top, they have moved quite in, far in that direction. Which, I mean, depending on what kind of gamer you are, it could be bad or good. But for me, I, I'm not much of a, a farmer, even though I went really to long lengths to uh, try to get this beta portal. That's the first time in probably forever that I've ever decided to sit down and farm something for so long. Um, you guys know me pretty well. Um, I just made my fourth legendary, and one of the things that I like to tell people is I don't like farming. Um, and most people don't seem to believe that I could get the number of legendaries I have without farming. And I, I think some of that can break down to your definition of farming is. I don't like going and standing around zones and doing the same thing over and over, but I, I enjoy playing dungeons. I don't really consider dungeons farming. I go there because I enjoy the content. So I, I think you kind of made a good point. It is good for some people and bad for others because, you know, dungeons have been a great way to get gold up until now, and that benefits a certain type of player. Me, I guess, would be the, the type of player. Now with the kind of open world farming, it benefits a different type of player. And mm -hmm. you can argue, hey, look, the dungeons are all still available, so me as a player, I'm not losing anything. 
but I have been farming these same dungeons. <laughs> I said farming there. <laughs> oh god. Um, but oh, I've been okay. playing these same dungeons for two and a half years, and it'd be nice to have some new options. Well, uh, so for my, and speaking, I mean like new stuff. Um, for my answer to your first question was, and I actually wanted to. I, Again, I haven't, I'm not sure I am 100% correct. I think I am. But from what I saw from Masteries, I believe that doing them opens up other parts of the map for you and opens up different content for you as you progress through them. And we also have to forget about um, adventures. I don't know what they're going to be because the, uh, the, the blog posts about them have been kind of vague in general, I haven't really described them very in, in much detail. But I believe that if you're talking about content wise, if if the maps we that we get aren't satisfactory enough, I believe that the um the depth that they have inside the maps and also with however I mean, we don't know what these maps are gonna be like and what these masteries and these adventures we wanna call are gonna be. So I'm hoping that what does happen is that and I'm 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 much of more of this player myself, even though I love playing with you guys and love playing with friends. I also like playing by myself sometimes, and I hope that some solo content comes out of this. Do you consider the open world style content we're getting now, like Dry Top and Silver? What, do you consider that solo content? Sometimes, yes. A lot of times, I'm just relying on myself half the time. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say anyone's a bad player, but. There are players who are question have questionable skill level um, in certain areas, and so I find I I rely much on myself to do things, even though I mean unless I'm playing with friends, in which it's a different story. Yeah, I just want to add one thing to the dungeons and I what I believe why ArenaNet is going for this open world PVE style of world bosses. Um, I think that due to their philosophy of like oh we're going to have ascended gear as you know the top gear and then you can have exotic really easily that there really isn't as much profit for them to invest in making new dungeons um, since they can't come out with um, you know like another tier of gear they could probably come out with another looks for gear but then they have to like create the different paths, make the new set of gear for three different set of armors. Um, and I just feel like maybe the heads uh, don't really see dungeons as, you know, um, as quote unquote fun for the most, uh, for most people. And I feel like their idea is that, well, open world content, everyone's going to go to these like new zones. And if we make them more dynamic, um, with you know all these type of things going on and have it as a challenging group content where players have to unite uh, to finish them um, that's kind of where they're heading towards but I also feel like that was their philosophy when they came out with this game with their manifestos um, but I guess it just wasn't executed as well like I honestly find like silver um, silver waste and dry top some of their events, that are going on now to be kind of like what their idea was when this game should have been uh, released with. But I find like the current world boss train is just pretty much mundane. Go to point A, kill something, but, then go to another point. Well, I mean, like the world boss train is kind of old hat right now. And even, I mean, a lot of people do consider that the Silver Waste Dry Top events should have been what first came out. But. I mean, there's nothing we can do about that right now. But what I, my real, what I wanted to say is that I kind of disagree with the fact that dungeons could be profitable because remember what we have for dungeons right now. You play a dungeon and you get tokens. You get these tokens to buy a specific skin of this dungeon. They could easily just make different skins for different dungeons or even make special skins that drop inside the dungeon that are unique to that dungeon. And so it's not really closed off. I mean, you don't need, and I'm quite on board with Aina on this, where you don't need a new set, like a new level of gear or a new level, like even level cap to progress in a game, which is why I'm so for rasteries and specializations. It's, it's really, 
there's so much more you can do with i mean we, there's a reason we call this fashion wars too there's more you can do with art like an art style and different skins than you can with um you know levels and a next level of gear and, and you know what like i completely agree with you with that point i just feel like what anet's been churning out recently has been that they're more focused on in terms of new looks and gear to be more focused on the gem store instead of releasing a bunch of new free updated you know 2015 skins through a new dungeon or through other things i mean granted you could say that the whole carapace armor was you know something that was given free and it was something to give players that grind but that's only like open world pve not to mention you have to like replay the story to get the luminescence set um well if you've noticed that the only skins they've been giving out like armor wise is outfits like very specific themed outfits they haven't actually given out skins for a long while like actual skins and so i think and this is just the speculation I think they're going to be moving towards more individual skins being collected by certain ways, maybe masteries or adventures, or even uh, just dropping. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I think they'll have a bunch of skins, HOT. Yeah. But again, like, skins aren't untempt. Skins are reward. So whatever you have to do to get the skins is the thing that has to be in. And like the the luminescent gear, I I, I want it because it has butterflies on it. And despite being a straight man, like I have a thing for unicorns and butterflies that probably I can't explain. But like I I want that Lumi set. I love the things that it does with dyes. I like the little butterfly on the shoulder. It is taking all of my patience to be able to grind through the story and the achievements and silver waste to get it. I I am not enjoying it at all. And I'm sort of sucking it up because I want the reward, because I want those skins. Mm -hmm. But it goes to show you that the content and the reward are not necessarily in line in a player's eyes, right? I can enjoy the content, but not like the reward. I can hate the content, but like the reward. And ideally, you enjoy both. Right? You do the content, and you get a reward that you appreciate. And I find that the content they're creating, not fun for me, and I haven't enjoyed much of the content that they've created in a while. Even though I think it's very quality. Like, I, I, I want to give props to the people at ArenaNet. I, I, it's not for me. Like, it's it just the design, not one that I appreciate as far as how these things run. Um, but the, the artwork is... The ideas behind it are good. It's just I don't like playing with a bunch of random strangers on a map. I like instanced content because I can grab you guys, right? I grab my guild. I, I go and do it with people that I enjoy on TeamSpeak and we hang out. The open world stuff, I just... Like, I know you can turn off map chat and I know you can ignore people and all that, but just, like the that thing where I'm running around with the eight rangers all point blank shotting things away from me, like, I don't like that. And I feel like that's all I'm getting now and I'm just getting tired of the recycled content. Well, I think another thing we have to consider is they are bringing guild halls back to the game. So we can only hope that guild halls have some connection to future content where, or future instant content. Well, so I, I think I was actually outspoken on a lot of the um, forum things, including the guild CDI, in not wanting guild halls. Because honestly, I think guild halls, it's a place where you go and you AFK or vendor. Now, if they come out with something better, I will be cheering for them all the way. You know, I made some suggestions about things that I thought would be cool. I thought it'd be cool to be able to set up, like, player statues as a guild member of the week. I thought it'd be really cool to have an area where you could spawn any boss inside of the guild hall. So, like, you could go with your guild and practice, like, against Loopy or something without having to do the dungeon. Uh, and there were a couple other things. And, you know, I don't know what they're going to give us in the end. But guild halls, just if it's a place that you go with merchants, that's not content. That's I mean, it is well, maybe in the sense that it's a map, but it's it's not something you play and enjoy. That was back in Guild Wars One, so 
Although, I, I, I'm kind of the oddball here. I loved guild halls, and so did many of the guilds that I had. We loved our guild hall. All right, so we're going long. I feel like I've said my piece. Any final thoughts? I think, well, I mean, I don't want to talk over... I, does anyone else, before I say anything, does anyone else want to say anything before I go? I feel like I'm the one, like, controlling a conversation. I don't want that to happen. Uh, no, go ahead. I might say something later. All right, well, I... My, my final thoughts on this is, like... Well, for... I'm not going to talk about me because I'm a completely weird person and I can take enjoyment out of anything. But for people in general, I think we should just sit on our hands and wait. I think that and this is something that I hate about video games in general is that speculation can really just make you angry. It can make you upset. It, 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 it makes you really depressed about the games and it, it makes me depressed watching people... Um, like, I, I, I know everything deserves criticism, but it's just, it, it, there's sometimes when it gets really bad where these things can, like, make someone really hate the game just because of something that may not even be true. And so I would caution people to just, just wait and see what happens. You can talk all you want, but in the end, it's still, it, it still comes up to what, when the game comes out. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely agree. I'm getting a little tired of being called a whiner and a Q-Cure and, and just because I dare question the design strategy that ArenaNet's taking. And, like, sometimes people have really good arguments. There's a, there's a really good argument that I've heard people say where they're like, look, most people just play this game in the open world. Open world PvE is the vast majority of players. So why wouldn't they put the vast majority of development effort into that game type? And like that's a good argument. And I have a counter to that. And you know, I'm not gonna go into the whole detail here, but basically my counter is those players also probably play less. And so you also need to add more content for your players who put in more hours because they need more content. Right? If I'm only playing open world PvE for five hours a week, guess what? There's still a ton for me to do in the game. But when you're like me with 3,200 hours or, you know, Raz, I, I think you said you had over 5,000. Yeah. We've gone through the content a lot, and it would be nice to have some new stuff. Um, so, like, there are good counter arguments to what we're saying. I'm just, like, the thing that's been frustrating me lately, and I, I hate the term white knight, and I get called it all the time, like... I, I'm constantly being called either a QQ or a white knight. And I think it's possible to have criticisms of things that you like. You know, I, I love this game, but there's things that are imperfect about it. And I wish we could discuss those things without calling each other name and without setting up straw men to, to knock down over and over. I saw that a lot last week when we were talking about portal drops. I would say, oh yeah, I don't, I don't like this system. I don't think it should be limited to dry top and silver waste. I don't like the way that they've made it farming related. And the response was, oh, you would just rather have it be because a newsletter. You signed up for a newsletter, newsletter, newsletter. And I'd be like, no, like there's other ways you could do it. You could have them drop from any world. You know, add them to world versus world. Add them to PvP. Add them to other e maps. Uh, you could tie it to daily login rewards. I, I wrote a long post today about different ways that they could have a token system. So you need like 25 tokens to get a beta portal thing. And you'd get a token for every thousand achievement points. And you'd get tokens for having certain titles. And you'd get a token for finishing points of no return. You know, And then you could also get tokens as drops in Silverweight. So you had different ways to try and get your 25. And that would be more in line with the design philosophies they've had all along, which really are play how you want. Different ways, if you have this particular goal, there's different ways to get there. I feel like they've been making it a lot more, hey, if you want this, you just grind this thing over and over and over again. Not been enjoyable for me. Mm-hmm. All right, finalis model, last words. Um, 
think we should definitely like exercise patience at this point then because I know we threw the final product um, we can't really judge entirely um, and you know we've already expressed our concerns yeah I agree with you uh, Miles and Res we should uh, be patient but on the other hand I've been waiting for a few years now and my I love the game I, I love ring on it I just my patience is uh, getting thin and I might end up moving to a different game altogether if I don't just quit gaming and I think that's the problem you're seeing more and more people you see it in our guild people log in and they say hi and they hang out for a little bit usually they're playing another game they're on team speak but they're that's it and there's a lot of players in the game but how many of those are people who just recently bought it and they just haven't played enough to get tired of it yet no. oh yeah like I mean all my friends who started off playing the game um, left me because <laughs> uh, they found my, the game you know? my friends left me right at the beginning <laughs> yeah mine were all gone within the first four months Mine were gone in the first two weeks. <laughs> I was really sad. Well, guys, thanks for the really long conversation. We went over 41 minutes, so I uh, appreciate that. I don't know, like, I, I, I was very angry last week. Uh, I think now I'm just kind of... I'm just feeling a little sad. I just I want there to be new, fun, amazing stuff for us, and I haven't had that excitement yet from Heart of Thorn. And I, I'm absolutely gonna buy it. Like it's not even a question. I I will be buying a copy for myself and a copy for my girlfriend. But mm -hmm. I just haven't seen anything yet that makes me go like, yeah, I'm so pumped to get like back into the game and do all this stuff. There you go. Thanks again, guys, and. Uh, Welcome. Thanks. If you guys actually listened to this and made it all the way way to the end, thank you. We should like say something funny here. Uh, don't uh, uh, don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> and if you do, uh, smoke pot. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Raz. Don't go out without a uh, without a towel. <laughs> and there we go. Yeah, that's a good one. Don't go, don't go there without a towel. All right. Don't panic. Bye, everybody! Yeah. Bye! 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 -bye.